Hi there. My name is Max Trudeau. I'm currently a Mises scholar at the University of Pennsylvania. Today I'll be discussing our work with a dynamic, data-driven, selective drain management protocol for pancreatoduodenectomy. We have no disclosures. By combining these two beneficial concepts, a dynamic drain management protocol for pancreatoduodenectomy was conceived. The efficacy of this protocol was originally tested in a prospective multicenter trial, showing markedly reduced rates of fissure occurrence. Putting this all together, a protocol looks like this. A primary intraoperative risk assessment based on the fissure risk score, where drains are omitted for negligible and low-risk patients and placed for moderate and high-risk patients. Followed by secondary risk assessment in the post-operative setting, where drains are removed early if amylase is below 5,000. We now provide an extended experience with this protocol. Adherence was prospectively annotated, and cases that deviate from this approach were considered off protocol. Primary outcome investigated was CRPOP. Here's what we found. Focusing on negligible and low risk cases, 62% of patients were on protocol with no drain placed intraoperatively. No fistula is developed in any of these patients. Moving on to secondary risk assessment, overall, moderate and high risk patients with post operative day one drain fluid amylase below 5,000 followed early drain removal 78% of the time. On protocol patients displayed significantly improved rates for almost every outcome metric. Most importantly, a tenfold decrease in fistula occurrence was associated with early drain removal. In a quick overview, one quarter of patients are negligible or low risk and do not need drains. Conversely, moderate and high risk patients benefit from drains. And lastly, better outcomes are achieved through early drain removal. In conclusion, these data show substantiated value of this concept, advocating for greater adoption of this dynamic, data-driven drain management protocol.